fellow creatives, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm gonna to be reacting to a trend that was going around where uh, illustrators and digital artists cartoon themselves. And I didn't realize that this was a trend. I kind of inadvertently made one too, where I illustrated self-portraits, which is basically what cartooning yourself is. So I did that if you wanna go and see that. But today we're gonna to be on YouTube and we're gonna see what cartooning yourself is all about. So I'm going to type in and see what the, oh, this one looks good. Um, how to cartoon yourself in Procreate. So she's using Procreate. Her channel is, what's her channel again? Genevieve? Genevieve's Design Studio. So let's see what she has to say about cartooning yourself in Procreate. This is gonna be fun. Turning a photograph into a cartoon is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly- Wow, okay, she did hers really good. There's a lot of detail, but not too much, and she kind of- I think she turned hers into a sticker. That's different. Exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hey, hello, wonderful people! It's oh, I love her accent. Okay, she has a really nice fluid transition, and she's holding a bunny. Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. Aww, I love her little transition, so cute. Line art, okay. Now, I've been getting so many requests to make this video probably every day in my Okay, so she has some information up here already about um, the type of iPad that she's using and the app that she's using and such like that. I like that. She has quite a few different little designs here. So Instagram DMs, to be honest. So today is the day. We're doing Tap on insert a photo, which is going to open up your photo. Okay, so she goes through a whole bunch of technical stuff, but let's album. see. Now you're going to pick whichever photo you want to use. I know mine is right here, so I'm just going to tap on that. Oh, what a cute photo. And then you can zoom in and make sure you're focusing on one specific part of the picture. And if you have an animal in there as well, that's totally fine. I'm going to show you how to animal, handle that. little rabbit. That. So once your image is where you want it to be and zoomed in properly, you can just exit the arrow tool by clicking on it again. Now we have the reference, but it's a little bit intense. It's going to be really hard to see what we draw on top of it. So we're going to lower the opacity of the picture. Okay, right, so she lowers the opacity of the photo in the layer. And now we're going into outlines. Okay, so she lowered the opacity so that we, she can see what she's doing when she's illustrating, and then she's gonna start with the outlines. Outlines are always good to do first. It depends on what style and look you're going for. This may like differ between people, but. I do have some tips for that, but first we're going to need to create a new layer. So just go ahead and in the layer panel, tap on the plus and create a new layer. Honestly, the main thing you, to remember, especially with the facial features, is that less is more when drawing your line art. I agree with that. Less is definitely more. You don't want to do too many um, accents and too many lines because you can just make the image look old or uh, dated and it just doesn't look that great. But she's doing great so far. Let's see how far she gets with her line art. Oh, she's doing lips as well. So the middle line, making sure that you draw the corners of the map real well. And then just giving an idea of the bottom lip real quick. And that's pretty much it. Now you can see if I went ahead and also draw the top lip, it just, just looked very weird. So leave it out. We're going to color it later. And <laughs> just leave it out. Oh, that's fun. She's adorable. And once you've drawn the facial features, it's probably going to look a little bit creepy, even if you left out a bunch of that's going to look a little bit creepy, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it does, but then that's why you add layers and colors and stuff. But line art is kind of interesting. You definitely want differences in thickness of your lines for line art, which she has done here. And it does, it, it, it starts to look a little creepy as you go along, but we'll see. Let's see how this turns out. I'm going to draw the actual hair in the picture. So just starting with the outline again. That's pretty simple. It should be pretty defined. And once you have the outline, honestly, all you have to do is go back in and show the general shape and movement of the hair. I agree. When you're illustrating hair, it could be a bit tricky. Um, if you're doing a cartoon outline like this, 
Um, by the way, it looks like a coloring book at this stage, but um, when you're doing an outline like this, you definitely want just to get the overall shape. You don't want to do like every single like individual little curl, especially if you have curly hair like me, where it has like all these different like curls, rivets, and changes of direction. You want to just give an overall shape and then you want to just do a few accents in there. You don't want to do, you don't want to overdo it because then it just, it becomes too much and then your color is supposed to really speak past that and not so much within the line art itself. Okay, right now the hair falls in kind of here, goes here. I'm not gonna draw this big mess here. I'm just gonna have the hair draw or fall, sorry, pretty smoothly. She said that she does, she's not gonna draw like the big mess that's down there, but I think her hair is beautiful. So it's not really a mess. It's just difficult to draw and illustrate all that. And you really don't need that all that information because you can fake that information with the color and the different tones of color that you're gonna use when you color it in. Like this, and you know, that's, that's going to be the main shape. Then going back in and adding a few more strokes, again, just to show the general movement. If you are using my inking pack from my new bundle, I do recommend switching. Oh, love a little self promo in there. She has her own set of brushes that she has made for Procreate. Love that. She's using that for the bunny here. I do agree with the fact that you need to connect your lines together when it comes to fur. You can be a little bit more dramatic and a little bit more um, free handed with it, but you do have to make sure that all the points connect, especially if you're going to color it in the brush pen which is much more sensitive to your strokes and is not going to smooth them out nearly as much well that's way too big but that brush is going to be way less smooth so that's not as good for you know clean outlines but for fur that's optimal so that would be my suggestion otherwise if you're working with free brushes you know you can stick with the studio pen and it's going to work just fine oh i love her suggestions using certain types of uh, pens and tools for different textures and such like that. And now we're going into color. So once you have your line art, we're going to just add the colors really quickly. But before that, make sure that you hide the base layer, your reference layer with the image, just to make sure that everything was outlined. Seeing the opacity up to 100%. Now we're going to put it at the top and put it where it's not going to be bothering. Now you probably have seen this a lot um, if you look at illustration videos and especially like Procreate type videos. They do have a small reference photo in the corner that they use for coloring. So that way you get the right colors and you can pull the colors from the original photo and use it in your cartoon of yourself or whatever subject you're using if it's not yourself. And now we can simply use it to color pick colors by just holding the fingers on one section of color. Okay, that doesn't work on my version of the iPad. I have a 10.2 inch seventh generation iPad. That feature does not work on this one. That works on the newer versions of iPad. So it's more like the ninth gen, I think. If it doesn't work for you because you have an older iPad, that's it's it's just because it's an older iPad. I have tried that, it does not work. So you can just color pick your colors with the um, color selector. Then you notice though, if you do that over your face and you're trying to pick your skin color, I know it looks crazy right now, but if we add blur, Essentially, it mixes all the colors together, which means once you go ahead and color pick one, it's going to give you an average of your face. Oh, that's such a good tip. Okay, I did not think about that. But yes, if you blur your reference photo and choose your colors from the blurred photo, then you can get a more average accurate color selection for your base colors for what you're coloring. That's such a good tip. By using Procreate, there are so many different ways you can color your character. I'm going to give you tips on how to do this the most efficient way possible. So what I would recommend is creating a new layer, putting it below the line art. Just keeping your colors and your line art separate is good practice. What you do is adjust the flood here. So instead of moving your pencil from left to right, just adjusting the flood within the different, different shapes. For the face, you're probably going to have a lot of weird kind of connections like in the hair and everything. For now, don't worry about it you can quickly fill in the missing parts. So once you've done the best wow. you can using the reference tool. It already looks so good when she's using the reference tool to fill in all the colors. This is a great base. Let's see how it turns out. Exclusively using the reference tool. 
So still on your color layer, if you have a crazy looking hairline like me at this stage, that's totally okay. You're going to go ahead and use the smudge tool, which is this little finger icon here at the top. And you're going to pick the stucco brush from the painting panel. And with the smudge tool, you're going to be able to drag your skin color onto the hair to create a nice transition as your hairline, as opposed to that very clean line we had before. You can paint all of your shadows with that one color. And you can really use any color of your choice here to paint your shadows, depending on the vibe you want. I usually like to draw my shadows using a grayish purple. That's what I like. The only thing I would recommend though is not to go with a neutral gray because then your shadows can look a little bit muddy. So any color that has a bit of a tint to it is going to work well. Okay, so she gives a lot of good tips here, especially with lighting and shading. And she definitely did a very good job with her illustration here. She also did a white background outline of herself as well, which I think really makes it pop. And she added some slight highlights to her hair and also to her skin. So I think she did a great job. This is just one of the Cartoon Yourself challenges that I have seen. So Genevieve did a really great job. Let's look at, oh, this one looks cool. Hello guys. Today I will show you how you can easily draw yourself as a cartoon. We will first draw the outlines, color it, shade it, and in the end okay. create two different versions of the finished drawing. And import the image using this option from Action. I picked this particular photo because the girl has wonderful multicolored eyes and long curly floating hair. Okay, so this is from Tati Works and I've seen her work before on social media. So I'm really happy that she did this as well. She picked a beautiful photo and let's see, can see how she does this. This way the image is perfect for demonstrating the technique fully. But if you are going to pick your own photo to cartoon yourself for social media profile picture, note that it will look round on preview and it would be better if it was symmetrical regarding center. Now let's create a layer right above the photo. And since I'm going to use black color for tracing, we better change the opacity of the photo. Okay, so it seems like everyone so far, of uh, the two that we have seen, um, they always take their reference photos opacity down and they always start with the eyes. I think the eyes are a great place to start because it is kind of like the central part of the face, including the nose. So that seems to be a trend that everyone seems to be going with. With low pressure and then increase it starting from the middle. And lashes. And lashes. Since it is a girl, lashes will be big. And we are lucky because on this photo they are clearly seen. So she does a lot more line work around the eyes, but it's all style based. I love what she's doing with the lashes. Normally thinner and shorter. And she's doing so lower I'm lashes So I'm not pressing too. on the pencil. I will continue drawing the nose. But later we will fix it all using shading. Okay, so she fixes a lot of her line work with shading, which you can do. You can make your line work look a lot softer using shading techniques, which I think is very useful. Uh, she definitely uses a lot more line work than um, the previous one that we saw. And she's doing and both the top, here. middle, and Again. bottom lines of the lips. So a completely different style, but this still works. I will start outlining the face. We can also keep some spaces between the lines. Later I will remove them. Alright, so so far she has her line work done except for the hair. And it's looking very good. I love how she splits her lines up and doesn't like completely connect to everything. And that way it gives it more of a lighter feel and an airier feel. Let's now check what we got. Oh, that's so interesting. She's using color to fill in the hair and, and the eyebrows the bottom. instead of using um, actual line art to do so with her black line. So that's completely different. Let's see how it comes out. And copy and paste it in this menu. I love how she copies and pastes things so she saves herself some time and doesn't have to do it twice over. Then I'll flip it. I also handpicked the colors from the iris and first color will be this one. There is another thing that she is doing that is different. She is creating a freehand selection in the program and then she's filling it with color. 
I prefer that because you get a lot more expressive line work with that and you can get more custom shapes that way so it doesn't actually look like you went through and just like made a shape. It's a lot more um, expressive that way. Oh, her eye that she made is so pretty. She was very detail orientated with this. Love it. It looks so and good. the second one. And I will do it exactly. And add these details. And the details. And she's moving on and to the And then just lip. drop the color inside. After that, I will go to adjustments and select hue saturation brightness again using pencil. So this is the way I'm going to create shading all over the painting. Oh, Setting I have not to seen 50%, this And lower the brightness to 47%. These are some good tips. I would not have thought to do I'll that. I'll darken the upper lip on top. Very nice. Also in the corners. I will draw the hair. I like the way she did the lips where she did an adjustment layer on top and it made it into a shadow on top. So that way you don't have to choose a million colors. That was a good tip. Oh my gosh, she's using such a beautiful texture Here, I'm brush to do the, the hair. direction of the hair. Let's go more to the right. This brush is also very pressure responsive. So she does the entire outline of the hair and then she goes in and creates these expressive brush strokes and then she fills in the rest of it after she's done the brush strokes and then she fills in any uh, empty space that's there. That is so good. Oh, and then she turns her reference photo off and then fills in anything that she missed. That is completely different. And then she takes a highlighter color and just keeps going into these expressive brush strokes for the hair. It's so pretty. Wow. And this time I will increase the brightness to add the highlights. I love the way she's using the adjustment layers to create shadow and highlight for this piece. This is so beautiful so far wow don't have to be very accurate then i'll just go to the neck and outline it too well she outlines everything then I will she just, just the color inside the color and paint all the gaps and then she uses Proceeding. the adjustment layers to create her lights and shadow a little inside the nose she's hitting like all the points that you need to when it comes to lighting and shading in a image she adds highlights and oh my gosh. So wow. we have the hair going outside oh my gosh. and the t-shirt is cropped. You can pick whichever version you want to keep. That is so good. Okay, Tati works definitely really, really good. Like, wow. Okay, so I just reacted to Cartoon Yourself trend, but um, wow. Okay, from the ones that we have seen, they are very, very talented. This, of course, is done through practice and just repeating the process that you use. Um, we saw completely different processes with how you cartoon yourself. Everyone has their own way of doing things. They were so impressive. Uh, I think it was Genevieve's Design Studio and then Tati Works. Very, very good. And what a fun challenge. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm having fun doing these React videos. Do you guys like them? Let me know in the comments down below and let me know if there's anything you want me to react to as I also reacted to some TikToks as well. I am also on TikTok. If you aren't following me already, go ahead and follow me. I do design illustration over there. Um, I just kind of started, so I don't have too, too many yet, but I'm working on it. And I will see you all in my next video. See you soon, creatives.